connected, really connected. And um, Pastor uh, Chris Arman is 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 dear to that to our hearts. Um, this is uh, third generation that is on the mission field in Africa. Um, so his father, and then you, and then you you raise you raise your kids there. You raise your kids right in Africa. Wow. So amazing. So uh, give him a hand uh, as he comes to share the word of God to start. Amen. Wow, it's so good to be here. Um, I've been wanting to come and visit you for quite a long time. Sorry, forgot. <laughs> we don't have electricity in our church in Malawi, so... I'm not used to these newfangled gadgets here. Um, <laughs> but we've been, um, my wife and I, and we have three children, have been living in southern Africa for the past 15 years. Uh, five years in Zambia, and we went on the team with without children. It was just the two of us, and we joined Pastor Ronaldo on that team in 2004. We left. And we were with him. Uh, we came back to the United States. We had our two daughters. And then we went back with them to Zambia. And we were with him for another uh, three more years with our whole family. And then God gave us a vision for the country next to Zambia, which is Malawi. And we moved there in 2012. Uh, the end of 2012, and we were there. We've been there for 10 years. While we were there, we have another child. Our son came. We, we came back to the United States. We, my wife, gave birth for, to him here, and then we brought him back after he was he was really young, probably about maybe two months old. We brought him back. So my yeah, my kids have grown up on the mission field. My oldest daughter went there when she was three, and. My other daughter was she couldn't even walk, and we went to the mission field. She learned how to walk in on African soil, and um, it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. It's been a privilege to serve the Lord in a foreign country. Uh, it's the people are precious people. The people of Malawi are very humble and uh, just wonderful people, and it's a lot like being in church here. Uh, we all have problems that God has delivered us from and is delivering us from, and we need the love of God. And the way that God shows his love is he uses his body. It's his church that puts an arm around you and says, I love you. You're accepted here. Christ has paid it all. Come and enjoy this together. And then we come together as the body of Christ, and God anoints our time together. And the same thing that happens here happened there. And it started with our family, and we had a, an, an African pastor from Zambia that came with us. And we just were just a little team and just started evangelizing the same way you do and just going out on the street, and people started to come. And little by little, uh, the church started to grow. We started a Bible college right away. We started offering classes started um we put a radio advertisement out just like a one minute radio advertisement i think maybe 10 people came from all different churches started coming to the bible college and then little by little people uh loved the the doctrine that was they were hearing because we have a really great doctrine in this church it's a great balance it's because the Lord says a false balance is an abomination to him, right? It's a balance of grace, what God has done for us, giving his whole care. He gives, every, he gives us everything, all of who he is. He's given it to us, his, his character and his nature. And he's saying, the Christian life that I want you to live, I'm going to live it through you, right? Philippians 1, 6, faithful is he that called you, He'll, all, he'll also do it. He that begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete it until that very day, the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And 1 Thessalonians 5.24, faithful is he that called you, he'll do it. He'll do it. 
And so he's done it. He's done that. Um, <clears throat> while uh, maybe after the first year of us being in Malawi, uh, we, my, my parents, who had my dad and my stepmom, had been missionaries in Croatia, and they started a church there, and they lived there for five years and handed the church over. And then they went, were in Baltimore. They were retired, and they came to visit us in the new mission field. And they, they enjoyed it so much, they said, hey, can we just move here instead of staying in Baltimore? And I said, sure. And then, yeah, th three years after we were there, they moved. And then uh, another couple, uh, Pastor Matt Sleva and his wife Lisa, and they, he's a friend of mine from Christian school in Baltimore. And we were on the same basketball team and in the, in the school. He came with his wife, and they were there for seven years also. And God just brought people. God brought people. And God raised up people. And it, it, throughout the week, we would do a, a message from the church in Baltimore. We would download it and then show it at our house on our little TV screen, our laptop, our little laptop. And we would say, hey, anybody that has free time before they go to work or before they start their business, come and let's pray together. We, pray, we would pray for like a half hour, pray for the church, and some, some faithful men and women would start to come to our house in the morning, and they start to listen to messages from Baltimore. They would come with us on the street and evangelize, and God started to raise up leaders. <clears throat> and our one church that was in the capital, the capital of Malawi is Lilongwe, started to, we, we planted a second church. And then that church after COVID, those two churches divided again, like, is it meiosis or mitosis? And they divided again and into two other churches. So we have, we have four churches in the capital. And then we sent uh, two missionary teams to one along the lake shore, which is the eastern part of the country, and then one in the south. So now there's six churches in Malawi. And uh, it's amazing what, what God has done. And the Bible College grew too. And I, I think this is a plug for the Bible College. Bible College is really, really the greatest education that you could ever get. Because it's not just for the time here on the earth, or on the earth but it's eternal. It's forever. You're, you're learning, what we learn in Bible school and studying the scripture is what we're going to use as our capacity to praise God for eternity going to use the doctrine that you've learned from the scripture because heaven and earth will pass away but his word will never pass away and our bible college has started with 10 or 15 progressively people told their friends and told people in their neighborhood and before covid we were at 250 students it was like bigger than our, the bigger than the church the church was <laughs> Because it was people from all different churches. I think we had maybe 30 different churches represented. And all different denominations. And my, my father was instrumental in keeping the spirit of the Bible college uh, a spirit of oneness. Because there can be all kinds of discussions that can happen with different denominations. But he, we used to pray together as a Bible college. And he would lead it. And said, so, you know, no matter what de denomination you're in, we're praying to God, our Father. And that brought us a great sense. There was no arguments. There was no divisive questions. It was just, it was wonderful. And we, we, even now, up since my mother and father have come back to the United States, that spirit of oneness has stayed there in our Bible college. And now it's dropped a little bit since COVID. Now we're, we're about half of what we were. So we have about 120 students right now but there's just joy and there's fellowship and it's it's a great blessing um may i just have a little thing to share with you and um so let's pray heavenly father thank you so much for this church what a joy it is when the brethren dwell together in unity and you really command a blessing and you you have lord you've you've blessed us so much and the blessing of fellowship is such a joy and you have a word for us lord and thank you that you're so faithful and we just pray for for your anointing that you you have something for the inner man in our hearts 
And we pray that you would just speak to us and touch us and that what we have, what we receive will be eternal in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. If you can open your Bible to uh, Matthew chapter 14. I, I had a, like a side job that I did in, um, here in, in Florida, in Miami, and I said, oh, I'm going to be here. I, want, I need to visit the church in Miami. It's like not even a question. So I emailed, I emailed uh, and, and just said the dates and everything, and it was perfect. It all worked out. God bless the, the young people's ministry. And um, so, you know, on this job, we're doing deliveries all the way from New York City, all the way down the East Coast. And last night was amazing. We have, you know, a group of maybe eight, eight guys that are doing deliveries. And we were in one of the hotel rooms in Hollywood. Um, and just almost for three hours, we had just this incredible conversation. Most of all the guys are... Christian. There's, there was one guy that wasn't a Christian, but he was hungry. He was asking questions, and he was just asking question after question. And it was, it was amazing the anointing that God put on that, just that little meeting of, there was six of us, six guys, one, one non-believer, the rest believers. And, but without like ganging up on this other guy, we just gently answered his questions like God would you know how God is so gentle with us and I was just thinking about that uh this morning and and this is the verse that that came to my mind and it's it's in Matthew chapter 14 verse 17 and you know this is the story of when there's 5,000 people that have come and maybe spent a day or two listening to Jesus teach and they, they're they being sent away, but, but Christ has compassion on the multitude and says, give them something to eat. And then the disciples come back and say, there's five loaves and two fish. And then verse 18, Jesus says, bring them to me. And I think this is like our lives. This is like greater grace as a ministry. You know, we have... Many, many small churches, you know, many that seems like something small. The verse that goes with it is in John chapter 6, verse 9. So keep that in your mind, and then, uh, because these are the words that really stuck out to me. So if you turn to John chapter 6 and verse 9, the same story, there's five loaves and two fish. And then, but these words that, that come out, Okay, so, you know, this is what the disciples say. There's a young boy who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? And God is in the business of taking five loaves and two fish. And we say, like, God, what, what are these among so many people? We could say, you know, who are we as a church among the millions that are in Miami? But but Jesus says, bring them to me. And he looks up to heaven, <clears throat> and he blesses the food, and it feeds all the people. And he looks at our church in Malawi, too. Malawi is a small country. I mean, it's not small. It's like the size of California. It has 20 million people. And our little church could say, but what are we among so many people? And Christ says, come to me. And he blesses our lives, your life, my life. And he he breaks our lives, too, sometimes. Have you ever felt broken? <laughs> like you're going through a process in your life, and you're saying, why is this happening? And God says, I got to break the five loaves and the two fish so that it can feed all these people. And, you know, when our lives are broken, <clears throat> people really see the grace of God pour out of it, and they're touched. And they, and they, they can see how sometimes we suffer and we suffer in joy sometimes. We, we suffer well, right? I've heard Pastor Schauer say that, suffer well. And, uh, and people see that, and it touches them. And we had some adversity in our, in our job 
uh, we had a, a guy that was driving this tractor trailer full of big bags that we were supposed to deliver. And he was uh, he didn't show up the day that he was supposed to. So we had a day that we didn't do anything. We're waiting for him, waiting for him. <clears throat> and we tried calling him over and over again. He just had a, like a, a story like he was stringing out a lie of why he wasn't there. And finally, he, he came a day late. And we had to do all this work, you know, working till really late to make up for the time that we're just sitting around. And we were angry at the guy, very angry. And, you know, at the end of everything, we bought food for all of us after we had done extra work. We were finished around 9 o'clock, I think, two nights ago. And we ha I said to the guys, like, let's just give him grace let's give this truck driver grace and we gave him some of our food and like he knew we were mad at him but we just said let's let's give him something that this is grace this is giving something what giving someone something that they don't deserve like giving someone the character of god when they don't deserve the character of god and the guy that was the the atheist he was like yeah what would jesus do and I started laughing. I said, hey, see, you're getting it, right? That's, that's right. That's right. This is a way to show this guy that this is different from what the world does. You go beyond. That's what grace is. When you think people are taking advantage of grace, that's how you know it's really grace. God doesn't mind getting taken advantage of. That's his character. That's his love. And he does it with us. He takes us or small, what are these among so many? And he says, I'm going to take them and I'll break them and I'll give them and they'll feel, feed these multitudes. And I really believe that's what God's doing in this time. And I've, I've seen it and I think we've seen it. Um, <clears throat> one of the guys that's, that's with us was in the church a long time ago, but he, he joined the military and he's been out west. And he came for one day of the convention and he told me, he said, man, it was uh, Pastor Moses' son. He said, man, I miss this. I miss this fellowship. I miss this life. I need it. I've, I've been to other churches, but I haven't seen the fellowship that, that we have here. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a privilege. It's a blessing to have that. And I think God does it with so many things. He does it with our money when we give in the offering. It might seem small. You, you give your tithe, and God takes it. You can, you can say as you're giving it, like, what is this among so many things? But God takes it, and he, he, he divides, he multiplies it. How does he do it? I don't know. It's a miracle, right? He takes it, he multiplies it. And how, how do we come from, like, a little church in New England and now in, eight, in, in 800 churches now in close to 80 countries? It's a, it's a miracle. And our vision as a family, we, we, we moved back to Baltimore with our family, and our oldest daughter is, she's a senior in high school now, which is, how did that, how did that happen? It's like light, light speed, you know? And she's a senior, and our, our other daughter is a sophomore, and I feel like I'm still a senior in high school. I don't know. <laughs> and I have a child that's like that. And then I have a little guy who's seven years old. He's going to be in second grade. And so we're believing God that we'll be back for maybe a year. And then we'd like to go to Namibia, um, where there's been a lot of teams that have gone out. And um, that's our vision, to go there and help be part of that team and, and start another church in that country, which is on the other side of the southern African uh, coast. And so... Pray for us. We'll pray for you. And maybe God's going to have to give you a bigger building because you're already filling this one out. But that's a good problem to have, isn't it? And he'll just keep doing the same thing. He'll, he just says, bring, bring them to me, right? Bring those five loaves and those two fish to me. And that really, that's all that matters. If we're in the hands of God, sometimes it's painful. Sometimes he has to break us, but he'll use us to feed the multitudes. And if it's on your job, you know, on, on my job that I just did, it was, it was, I was just 
so thankful that, you know, sometimes you don't know what you're going to say. And, and you just say, God, put the words in my mouth that, that these people need, that this person needs. And he did the same thing for the, my other coworker that's a believer. He said some amazing things that helped, you know, maybe just one person. And, and the last thing I'll say is, you know, the, this one guy that, that's not a believer, uh, we asked him the question, like, isn't this unique, you know, that we're all sitting here talking about the Lord to you? And, and he said, like, you know, I guess it's a coincidence that we're all here. And I said, but, you know, this is, this is God's heart for you. God put all of us here, all these other believers, not to bang you over the head with the Bible, but just God loves you so much that he, he wants you to hear this. Maybe you'll hear it more in your life. Thank God you're hearing it right now. You're hearing about the love of God and how his love is just for you. And all of us are telling you that as your friend. And it was, it was a blessing to be a part of that. And you know, we can, we can have that all the time. And sometimes God gives you those opportunities in your workplace at the right time, maybe at a gas station. You never know. And you just, just be faithful to, to let yourself be the food for the multitude. Just allow yourself to be broken for God to use you to feed the multitude. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for, for who you are and what you've done and how you continually, continually... You're seeking and saving those who are lost, and you're using us to do it. Lord, bless the church here. Lord, bless each and every person. What a great privilege to be together. Thank you for the freedom that we have in this country to gather like this without opposition, the freedom that we have to listen to your word. And we pray for our brothers and sisters that may not have that right now, Lord. Just give them strength in their inner man. Bless the rest of the service in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, it's cool. Okay, so that's my wife on the right-hand side and my oldest daughter with the glasses, Kalia. My wife's name is Julie. And my daughter, Kalia, with the glasses and my daughter, Poema, she's the one in the middle and Noah is the, the little guy. And that's our house in Malawi. That's like... Uh, very green, uh, beautiful, beautiful country, very fertile soil. They do a lot of farming. It's a, it's a beautiful place. So I just have a couple pictures. And so that was our graduation this past April. Yeah, Pastor Shabelli is there on the left. My father's there on the right. Um, yeah, my, my, my father and stepmother came to, to the graduation after being out of Malawi for the past four years, and it was it was it was like the Pope came to. <laughs> the church was so happy to see them, and they they really did, you know, they did so much in the church, just loving people. They used to have people over there. They you know they couldn't walk to everybody's house, and um, but they would just have people come over their house and cook for them and stuff. So we had ninety two graduates. Over there. This is um, evangelism on the street. That yellow piece of paper is our track. And this is one of the guys in our church. His name's Penjani. And like the, you can see that plastic tray, that blue pr plastic tray, is they're selling um, termites. They take these huge termites that come out of the ground and then they fry them and then they'll sell them like peanuts. They, ta they taste okay. Um, <clears throat> but so that was like evangelism on the street. This is the church. Um, the, you'll see a, another picture of the pastor in the church, but he's a mason, and he helped build this church, um, and he got some of his friends to all come together, and we bought the supplies, and he, he designed it and built it, and that's, you can imagine how crazy it was to watch them put those steel girders up. Without a crane, they used like a pulley, and they, <laughs> they built, it was totally not, covered by OSHA, but OSHA is not in, <laughs> in uh, Malawi, but they, they did it. This was a leadership meeting that we had um, after the conference with Pastor Shabelli. So that was like we would do, we'd get all the leaders there. And these are like a lot of the leaders from all over Southern Africa that are there that came to, to, um, to, our, to the conference. 
And that's the pastor that's pastor in that church that you saw. His name is Pastor Marlon, like Marlon Brando. And um, that's his wife, Emmy. And he's, he's a great, he's, he's very gifted. He's a carpenter and a mason, but he's also a wonderful pastor. And he really, he really reaches out and loves people. He's the one that kind of took it over. <laughs> he wanted to me. That's good. That's good. So these are the same. The, we had like a line of graduates that went out and around the, the street. And like over here is also our property where we want to build a, a Christian school along here. So we have two little plots with a street in between it. And hopefully we'll start with grade one to three. And um, we're going to put shops on the outside here so that people can rent the shops and sell stuff and that money will help the church so it can try to be self-sufficient. I think that's it, right? Wow. Praise God. Wow. <laughs> so um, after service, uh, for all who can stay, we will go next door. Um, we can ask Pastor Chris questions um, about what it is to be a missionary or whatever else you want to ask him. And um, we'll be serving some termites. And, uh, we got them in the door over here. So, I mean, we have plenty of them. We just got to, they deep fry these things? They just put them right in the fryer. Now in, um, I think Bahamas, maybe Haiti, uh, they, I don't know about it, they call them duck ants. Is the same term or no? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're saying no, but we go to Haiti. I've seen worse than that being eaten. <laughs> wow. That's funny. Wow. Praise God. Great, great word. Um, and um, we'll talk about that too um, after. So let's... Um, Let's, uh, let's just pray and thank you, Father, for uh, this amazing word that was given to us and how that word does this amazing work of transformation in our hearts. And, and sometimes we, we don't know, but we just come to Christ and we give our lives and we give our hearts to him. And, um, and this work uh, begins within us, conforming us to the image of Christ and allowing us to have the mind of Christ. That's a beautiful thing. So uh, just bless these thoughts, uh, the remainder of our service here today in Jesus' name. Turn, um, um, maybe, uh, well, you, you can turn or you don't have to, but if you want to, they don't have their Bible or they're not using their phone or tablet or whatever. But Matthew uh, chapter 29, it says, um, Take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke. And um, I heard a message from Dr. Stevens um, about this. Matthew 11. What did I say? Como? No entiende. Okay. Take my yoke upon you. And this here is speaking of the yoke of humility. The yoke of humility uh, in our lives. And this is a yoke that we can bear. 
believe it or not. Uh, humility is something that is learned. And um, I, think, I think people struggle with this within the church. Humility is not thinking of yourself too high and it's not thinking of yourself too low. It's not even thinking really of yourself. But um, Christ bore this humility. And in uh, John uh, chapter um, 5 verse 19, he says, The Son can do nothing of himself. And that's pretty amazing to think about that. The Son can do nothing of himself. He, was, he lived in perfect submission to the Father. I am um, meek and lowly of heart. And, um, you know, he was perfect submission in all things under the Father. If, if Jesus Christ lived, um, lived uh, independently of the Father, if he chose to live independently from the Father, but in his walk was completely perfect in all things, which means he outward he lived a maybe like a Christian life that we would like to uh, make an example of, but he but he but he lived independently from the Father. It would that entire work would be imperfection because he did it on his own. And when we do it on our own in our own ability and our own strength, the only thing that it becomes is you know wood, hay, and stubble. So. Um, Learning of this, learning of this humility. So, the Bible says that he taught as with authority. He taught as one with authority. In meekness and lowliness of heart. And um, even, even when he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, says he was lowly in heart and meekness this is this is a a transfer of your rights so to speak it's it's not my will anymore it, it, it's not even my choices some of us think you know we we do have a free volition but when we give that over to god it's not my will but thou will be done and, uh, and sometimes we struggle with that because we lived our whole life the way I wanted to live it. I, I made my own choices. I did my own thing. But where does that bring you? <laughs> where are you with those choices and decisions now? So it's a transfer of our right to Christ and where we learn this humility. Humility. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, learning of Christ. Jesus said, abide in me. Let my word abide in you, abide in me. In, in John 15, 5, he says, and apart from me, you can do nothing. Nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing, but apart of him, you can do all things in Philippians 4.13. It's like we feel like we're missing out, or I know what's best for me. I know what road to take. I know the decisions that need to be made. And it's not living in humility. We give so much into our flesh to make decisions that are spiritual in our life. And, and it's not to, you know, it, it's not to look at what we've done in our past. It, it's to come before God and, and, you know, we trust Him in our salvation, but we can't trust Him in our life. It, it, it just it doesn't make sense. So I, I, I love that part, you know, learn of me. Learn of me. Philippians um, 4.20, 
says, you have not so learned Christ. Wow. What are we learning if we're not learning Christ? And, and not just learning of the stories and learning of the miracles and learning what he did, but learning of his nature, learning about forgiveness and learning about mercy and and his gentleness and his kindness and his amazing love and learning of his grace. Are we learning these things? Are we being taught this? Or are we being taught about, uh, you know, that Christ can, you know, make me rich? And, and there's denominations that do that. This prosperity doctor, this prosperity teaching, it's all, it's all for you. Christ suffered so you can be blessed? Where does that say that? <laughs> that is not biblical. That's not a biblical gospel. That's not the good news of the... We wish it could happen. But there is trials. And in those trials, in that fire, we learn Christ. Only in the fire you're going to learn that. Only when you are dealing with trials of your life are you going to know and get to learn Christ. But we, we learn from Him. We learn from Him. We, um, we respond to Him. And we receive of Him. So from and to and of. In, in, learning, in learning of Christ, we... we <coughs> Praise you, Lord. We, we, we learn by hearing. We learn by hearing. We grow by hearing. To have our minds settled that we can hear that still small voice. Settled from all the loudness that is in the world. And all the activity that's going on. And the still small voice. Learning from his word. Being taught by the Holy Spirit. Re responding. Responding to him. We respond by faith. And then when we mix what we hear with faith. The Bible says in Hebrews 4, 2, it becomes profitable to us. Not profitable in material, but profitable in my fellowship with, with God. Are we, are we listening and are we hearing from the Spirit? Or do we only do that on Sunday? I think he has a lot to say to us if we only can hear and listen. And it's like our ears are clogged from hearing and then truly believing. Do we believe the words of Christ? Or are we believing the way we once were taught long time ago? Is there anything new that we can learn? Is God speaking to you often, to your heart? And by the way, we're not talking about an audible voice. We're talking about through the word. How can we hear if we're not in the book? What are we listening to if we are not in his word? We can listen to our own feelings. We can listen to our emotions. We can listen to the news. We can listen to the radio. We can listen to the system. We can listen to the politician. We can listen to everything else, but we're not in the Word of God. You have not so learned Christ. And then there's, um, and then there's receiving, and receiving is by grace. And it's only grace. We receive from God, not because we deserve it, because it's, his favor to share with us the love of his son. So everything that we do 
you know, I, I, I had somebody question, say to me, so, so you're saying everything's in grace? I go, yeah. Because if it's outside of grace, what do we deserve? Like pastor said, we deserve judgment. We don't deserve God's grace. But he extends mercy to us anyway. Because we are his children. You are his child. You're a child of the most high God. So not alone, you know, we are, you know, we, we, again, we trust him for salvation, but we don't trust him in anything else. So we are saved by grace in Ephesians uh, 2, 8, 9. We walk in grace or we stand in grace in Galatians 5, 1, stand in the liberty where I have set you free. And, 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 and the third thing is we, we grow in grace in, in 2 uh, Peter uh, 3.18. It's growing in the grace of God. It's, it's a relationship to me where I have uh, humbled myself before God. I, I, I'm, I'm giving my rights to him. I'm believing in God. I'm taking this yoke on. And by the way, it says what? He says, um, learn of me. I am meek and lowly of heart. And, 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 he, and he says that, that that yoke is easy and that burden is light. I am yoked together with Christ. My yoke is with him. When you are yoked, you're yoked to somebody. They used to yoke animals to each other. And if they got the wrong type of animal, it, it could be a crazy, there's, there's no fit because they're both so strong-willed, they're, all, they're both going in different directions. I see that sometimes in marriages. There's no yoke together. It's like, oh, this is the way it's got to be. And, and, and there's this more of this fighting with, within the family unit, and it's right in line with what the enemy's trying to do. But we are yoked to Christ. And because I'm yoked to him, this is where I can learn from him. So we, yeah, we, we grow in grace. We grow in grace. It's, it's amazing to um, have God teach me. And, and you know what? It, it, it's at your level. Some don't maybe understand things, you know. But keep seeking God. Keep going after him. Keep knocking Remember last week we talked about seeking the un yeah search the unsearchable God right he says to search me and then he says oh by the way I'm unsearchable it's amazing and boy do do the treasures of Christ come to us in the in that time we learn God we learn God and, and by the way this is not we're not teaching Gnosticism, which, by the way, I don't know about, but it's still very active here in Miami. Gnosticism is level of knowledge and wisdom. So I look down upon my sister because I think I've got more wisdom than her. That is dangerous. That is dangerous. Oh, I've got this gift, this gift, this gift. I am so higher than you. No, no. It's a form of Gnosticism. The Bible says we are complete in Christ. Complete means lacking nothing spiritually in Colossians 2.10. So we learn Christ, we stand in Christ, we walk in grace, we stand in grace, and, and we grow in grace. If, if we're not growing, if we're not growing, you can be very stagnant in your life. Your Christianity become very boring because I'm not growing. I'm not hearing and learning Christ. I'm not learning Christ. So can we, can we be taught spiritual things? Can you learn spiritual things from the Bible? Well, Jesus Christ said, you know, he says, I will give you eternal life. And by the way, do you understand what the word eternal means? It means you're secure. <laughs> it's eternal. There's nothing beyond eternal. It's not temporal life. You don't have life one day and lose it the next. It's impossible. 
you're putting your work in yourself, not putting your work in what Christ has done. Once and for all, sacrifice, Hebrews 10.10. But it's eternal. It's an eternal thing. And, um, and, and so we, we start to grow in that and we believe that. And, and can we be taught spiritual things? Can we continue to grow spiritually? Or was this just a one-time experience and now you live your life on your own? But no, after he says, I give you eternal life, he says what? I, I'll give you the prom. I'm going to give you the comforter. I'm going to give you one just like me. And he will walk with you. He will walk alongside of you. The paraclete. The comforter of God. And he says, I will teach you things to come. I will teach you all things to come. And, that, and that's wonderful for us. Because it, it, it just, it's uh, like we talked in our Wednesday class, is the, the Holy Spirit is this, like this down payment and it's the assurance of your salvation. And you have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise in, in uh, Ephesians 1.13, Ephesians 4.30. So these are promises from the Word of God that allow us to grow in grace. And you know what? These promises don't bring arrogance, don't make us proud, but we learn to take on the yoke of humility. To learn humility. And, um, and then just in closing, um, where he says, uh, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly, right in 29, I'm meek and lowly in heart. And then it says, look, I love that last part. He says, and you will find rest for your souls. Wow. You know, um, I do a lot of counseling, um, me and Steve uh, have an opportunity to be in the drug rehab. We do a lot of counseling there. We do a lot of individual counseling with the people that call and talk to. And um, our souls are all over the place. You, you know, there are, there are basically um, five parts of a soul. We have our mind. We have our emotions, our will, our conscious. And deep, deep down is our subconscious ways of thinking. But our emotions are, in a, in a lot of Christians, are, we are being led by how we feel and what we see and what I experience. But our emotions are never to lead us. They are responders of truth. We, are, we do not walk by sight. We, don't not, we do not walk by how we feel. If I walk behind, the way I feel all the time, I wouldn't be here today. Uh, Pastor Chris would be doing the, uh, all, I mean, I wouldn't be here. I mean, because, you know, but we have to override how we feel. The Word of God overrides that feeling. So when Adam, when, when Adam and Eve, when they fell, they started looking inwardly upon themselves and all their decisions were emotional and, and based on what they saw or felt. It says their eyes were open. Their understanding was open. It's the understanding of our, our soul. But when we become born again, born from above, this brand new birth, then um, old things are passed away and behold, all things are now new. I live now in this newness where now my spirit leads and my soul responds. Your emotions are good, but they're not to lead you. We, we, we don't make decisions based on how I feel. I've gone into great debt doing that. You can't, you can't make decisions of, wow, that car looks good. You know? <laughs> I don't, don't worry about what it costs, you know? But, but... You know, it's all, you know, what do they do at the dealership? Oh, sit in it. <laughs> you look better than you look in it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's take it for a ride. Punch that thing. It goes, you know. And, 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 and you're, you know, you're signing while you're taking it for a drive, you know. 
But, I mean, we can easily be led by how we feel in our emotions. And, uh, and, it, and, and basically, most of the mistakes in life, most of our errors and, and, and a lot of our guilt, a lot of our shame, a lot of our failures are because we made decisions based on how we feel, not by seeking God in humility. Yoke up to Christ. Yoke up to Christ. Transfer your life. Give it to him. That's, that's what you did when you were saved. Somewhere around the road, you took it back. You know? So humility is an amazing topic. And, um, and we want the church to pray in humility, to seek God in humility, to outreach uh, the city, uh, being humble and grateful and thankful for God for, you know, having doors open to us. And um, it, it's just a beautiful thing. So, amen? That's it. That's good today. So, Heavenly Father, I think you got it. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for the word of God. And that word quickens us. That word quicken means made alive. You know, it says that uh, one time we walked according to the course of this world with only a plan for me. And sometimes Christianity in, in some areas can be all self-centered. <laughs> There's no cross. There's no, I am crucified with Christ, I no longer live. None of that. It's all absent. It's what I can get out of Christianity, what I can get for myself. And uh, maybe there's somebody here that has never accepted Christ. They've never made a commitment. Uh, he's already made a commitment to you. He died on the cross for your sins. And salvation is not about joining a church or being a member of a church, or at least this one. But it's, it's about uh, a relationship that you can have with, with Christ at his expense. He shed his blood for you because of he loved you. So with nobody looking around,